Um, all right. The uh, Jim joined us from Boca Raton, Florida. Hey, Jim. Hey, guys. <laughs> Hello. We'll be we'll be down at Jim's uh, here in about a month, uh, the end of February, uh, for the on the twenty. Uh, for a workshop that starts on Thursday, the 27th, and that'll be for the working on the 8 and the 13 move forms, and then the 28th, the 29th, and then March 1st, we'll be doing a workshop uh, there for Tai Chi Level 1 um, Essential Skills, um, and it's a certification program. It'll be the test at the end of it um, and that kind of thing. So if you're interested in attending that, um, in Boca Raton, Florida in February, <laughs> nice sunny weather instead of the frigid snow, rain, whatever it is we're getting up north here now, um, then uh, make sure that we know that and or sign up for it. Um, so, Jim, the question out to everybody is, what, what do you think about the Tai Chi fighting workshop and what was your favorite thing, experience, applied principle, or what did you kind of get out of it? And, and Jim, as, as a bunch of you know, as an officer, and he's probably had a chance to use this already. So, <laughs> well, I've been working on it for quite a few years. So, <laughs> but the uh, you know the the information from the fighting seminar was uh, was really uh, you know it was a, it was a mind blowing uh, thing for me. Uh, I've been aiming at that kind of fluidity and that type of uh, ability to transition for a long time. Uh, with a bunch of different arts and uh you know after i mean i've been i've been at it for almost 40 years so <laughs> um i think i learned more in those five days than i have uh, through, throughout a whole you know career of studying the arts um yeah it was it was an amazing seminar but the uh you know as art had mentioned you know that uh, that ability to flow from one situation to another without uh, developing this mental block of, well, I have to do something a particular way, uh, which is traditionally trained in the arts. You know, you, you want to perform a, a move that you want to, you know, to uh, accomplish an end. And uh, the biggest thing, you know, was, was seeing how the body actually reacts easier, uh, how it's, uh, it's less strenuous and less... Uh, energy consuming to just follow follow the other person's lead you know you you see what their body is trying to accomplish and you work that into into your uh, you know your your movement so keeps things very fluid keeps things very natural and uh, also I think you know in the long run you probably wind up causing less injury to yourself uh, and it's important with sparring partners. Uh, you don't want to. You don't want to injure them. You don't want to fight. Fight the physical restraints of the body. So, um, a lot of uh, a lot of the concepts. I particularly like the uh, how certain movements aren't perceived as threatening. You had mentioned. <laughs> <or> you had, <laughs> yeah. We, we had gone over, uh, I, I don't know what else to call it, but the balloon man, uh, you know, fighting where it's just nice and loose and, you know, uh, you're able to come in from different angles. And when you couple that with the internal, uh, uh, the internal energy, it, it, it can be, you know, quite surprising how strong and uh, physical a blow you can deliver with uh, a very relaxed movement that's not perceived as a threat part of what he's saying by not perceived as a threat is that uh you're standing there with your partner and they put they whack and it was like okay well did you not see that coming oh i saw it why didn't you move because it didn't look like it was going to hurt me <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and it happened about five times in a row it was like you probably ought to move when he moves you like that. <laughs> yeah uh, yeah <laughs> Oh, it was, uh, like I said, it was great. Uh, and I rely a lot on, uh, I think I mentioned during the seminar, uh, I rely a lot on uh, lower leg strikes or uh, leg sweeps. Um, 
and the uh, the fighting technique went over, you know, how to use the leg just to disrupt the other person's balance and to redirect their step, so to speak, and, and how it, it puts them at such a disadvantage. So uh, I think that was another interesting part. I know I've relied on the... Uh, the redistributing of, uh, of a strike or a blow, as Art had mentioned, uh, I used to rely a lot on the breathing aspect of it, but by softening the body, the, uh, the pillow effect, I think is how you explained yeah. it. Yeah. Um, that, that was also a great, uh, a great aha moment for me. So, um, but cool. it was, yeah, it was extremely, extremely uh enlightening so i i hope that you'll be able to re repeat the seminar somewhere along the line oh yeah we will for sure yeah that was um, good the uh was there a favorite thing or experience or applied principle that something that really jumps out at you or something now his partner was uh was uh don who's a retired police captain and he's a hardcore individual who's been studying the martial arts and and using them for a very long time as well. He's a smaller yeah. man than Jim, but he's a little bit more, he's kind of got that body that you can tell is really uh, honed in for fighting. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, great, great partner, by the way. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, uh, it, was, it was great teaming up with him. And we did switch around to some of the other partners. Um, I, I always enjoy the, uh, you know, sometimes it's hard to gauge where you're at with the internal arts, but, by uh, uh, putting the uh, uh, putting the blow up mattresses around the uh, the quan there to to be able to practice your physical uh, the physical effects of the fagong and the, and the expansion of energy uh, fajing yeah fajing yeah uh, that was uh, that was also great although I still can't move Harry I don't know he's a beast. <laughs> I think I tossed Harry into one of the mats off of a touch, but that's yeah. I, <laughs> there was plenty I, of tossing going around. <laughs> I, I got him to touch the wall. That was about it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, now it was it. That's uh, you know that's also it, it's a great uh, it was a great aspect of the course because you can actually judge you know how that energy can be transmitted and and the effect it has. Uh, I think uh, a couple of the guys enjoyed bouncing off the wall. <laughs> How was your when you when you did, when we did the pluck? Were you able to get him up off the ground with that, or did you not? Yeah. You probably didn't get to do that to Harry, but uh, no, I, I didn't work with Harry at that point. But um, but I was able to you know to get some air off of some people there, and uh, uh, and it was uh, even even as we were doing the sparring, just being probably for one of the first times being able to judge an opponent's uh, which way they wanted to go instead of, you know, using my own uh, interpretation, you know, or, instead or of where forcing I them, yeah. So it, it was, uh, it was interesting to see the, you know, the slightest bit of disruption and balance or taking advantage of the slightest imbalance can really affect how a fight is going to go. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, was there something in there that you really didn't know before, didn't understand or didn't have before that uh, you found really helpful or that really surprised you for what it would do or for your ability to use it? Yeah. Like I said, that uh, probably the thing that stands out the most was that relaxed uh, uh, striking from up higher to a uh, down lower like, like the I, first I, like the first move in the form or um strum the loot but being applied in yes. the middle of a circumstance in the middle of fighting yeah okay uh, yeah yeah that was uh and that that whole um you know the spherical concept where the body acts as a whole yes and you know being yeah. more relaxed delivers the more power uh you know and um and just trying to, uh, I guess, loosen or, or, or relax, 
Yeah, you know, the, 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 the Tai Chi principles that. applied is what I'm hearing you say, but actually applying them is what part that that was. So it gave you a better. Did it give you a better sense for why Tai Chi's doing a bunch of the stuff that it's doing, and why oh, yes. some of the principles are what they are when you're having people just doing form and that kind of thing? That's kind of right, what I'm yeah. hearing from you, so that's why I'm asking. Yeah, yeah, no, it definitely did, and that that I know we always laugh uh, as the uh, you know the classic instruction, you know, relax more, relax more, and uh, there is there is a reason for those directions. <laughs> In the, in the fighting, it became evident. Yeah. Yes. Little, but, a little bit of incentive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But also, too, to, you know, to your credit, you know, when you asked if I, if any of the concepts, uh, you know, were new to me or, or I, putting them all together was amazing. But I, I mean, as a compliment to the whole system, uh, I've heard so many of the, uh, the, so much of the knowledge already in the other seminars that I've attended. So to see it all come together with the main purpose in mind of fighting or sparring was, uh, you know, gave, gave it all coherency, you know, so it all fit together. So it's good. Thank cool, you. Man. Oh yeah. The, uh, so here's a question I'll run through the list of you again here. What are you likely to focus on now? Or what is the thing that you came away with that, man, I'm going to be doing that. Now that you have a better understanding of how Tai Chi, uh, how Tai Chi Chuen, how the how Tai Chi actually fights, what are you likely to focus on now kind of going forward um, or something that you might be including in your practice normally that maybe you wouldn't have thought about it or put as much emphasis on it before? And we'll start with Matt again. Yeah, um, I'm going, I'm definitely going to make a lot more time um, for the actual Tai Chi sparring because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to have other people here at the school who went through it and are, you know, and, and know what it is already. And so that's like ready made for me because we did the workshop here. And so I'm going to take full advantage of that. And, um, and definitely set aside specific time um, in my training for the Tai Chi sparring. And then within the sparring, kind of the first thing I'm going to work, uh, you know, try to work on is um, really mastering those distances and uh, making sure that I have really full um, awareness and control over that space and, you know, the distance between me and my attacker and uh and you know hopefully doing um maybe some uh some back and forth rundowns as well um you know really really trying to get in on each other in different ways um and and you know running the method through its paces um uh, because i can i can absolutely see that it would work but i i also can see that i need better understanding of like when to move and where to move and why um and so you know i just need that that you know, dirt time as we called it, um, in the, in the scouts. practice, yeah, uh, practice, that practice time. Yeah. Um, yep. Um, and so, yeah, so that's, that's the main thing that I'm going to start focusing on, but, um, I am really confident that as I start, uh, sparring more then I will discover more and more, um, areas that need attention. <laughs> cool. Uh, let's see, Harry. Well, I'll be focusing even more on spherically centered than I already do. Um, I, I, I not not that, being double weighted. <laughs> exactly. You can't really do that enough or have that quality uh, better. So uh, there's that. Uh, I personally want to work on float and I want to work on that disconnect of the shoulders and the, in the waist for uh, taking the punches that will help lead me to the higher level of fighting that you have to offer down the yep. line. And now, a word from our sponsor. Tai Chi fights with internal power. The moves are important, but without internal power, it is just empty choreography. It is even said that with the right internal power skills, you could defend yourself with just one move. On FightingTaiChi.com, I proved the point. I created a course that teaches the must-haves for generating internal power and a bunch of different ways to use that internal power for self-defense. Each of the applications comes right from the very first move in most Tai Chi forms. 
And although it's all the same move, it does a lot of different things when you put the internal power into it. The secrets of the first move in Tai Chi shows you how to do that. Get it right now at FightingTaiChi.com. That's FightingTaiChi.com. Think about it. Think about it this way. One of the things on that with the shoulders and the and the uh, hips, what, what what you're calling a disconnect, is that it really isn't so much a disconnect as much as keeping it very soft. And then it becomes most people when you first teach it to them, you have to teach it as kind of a disconnect. But what happens if they keep them connected and not moving, they're not really able to open the shoulder. I've heard it called the shoulder nest, right? They're not able to open that, and they're not really opening and closing. So not able to open and close that very well. And they're not opening and closing the quads or the yao, the, back, the, the, the area in the back there, very well because they're too stiff for those things to open and close in a fairly rapid, by rapid, I don't mean like, like spastic either. I mean, they're just not going to open and close. And in the middle of moving and doing for using Tai Chi, those things have to open and close. And so if you try to keep them where people are keeping it where it's just – um, for lack of a better word, not disconnected, um, not open like that, not, not floating, if you will, like that. There's other ways to look at this. Um, then you're not going to be able to open and close those fast enough. And now you're going to be, it's going to put you into a state or a condition that as soon as pressure gets put on you, it's going to go closed and stiff. And then that's not going to work very well And when you're in the middle of fighting with it. Does that, does that make sense? And I'm really, really kind of talking about, because Harry's asked me over off, odd and on, off and on about once or, once or twice a year, something about opening and closing, like particularly the quads and the other stuff. Try to keep your, hit, your hips where you're not, discon what you're calling disconnected. It's not disconnected. The, uh, and try to open, uh, op open and close the quads and take a look at the difference versus when you open them and now you can move. Um, and that doesn't mean they're out of whack. That's not open either. It's closed the other direction. It's just that, that you're not holding it. You're not holding any tension in it. You're not holding it stiff. And you really need an internal and an external range of motion in order to open and close. Go ahead. Sorry. No, thank you for clarifying that further. Cool. Um, all right, but anyways, those things that you, sorry, I didn't mean to jump in there on that. The, uh, yeah, so, so working that quality to help with the float and then being able to tie into the other person's float yes, um, and how to do that. And I would tell you more about how to do it here, but then we're giving away the store. And, and if you <laughs> want to see what that is and using it, you're going to have to take the workshop or buy the videos and and go look and it is a it is a cool concept because it's part of how tai chi is using truly light low effort in terms of physical amount of force to really do a lot of really neat fast powerful things um and how to take full advantage of the other person's errors and mistakes and then once you have them to make it really hard for them to do a whole lot about it and so there's pretty some pretty slick stuff with that so i can see why that's one of your favorite Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks there. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Thank All you. right. Um, Art. Well, what um, I plan to do is spend even more time uh, going through the posture and paying more attention to various aspects that you brought up. Um, for example, the, the uh, alignment and opening and closing um, and I think I'm going to do it at least some of the time more slowly than usual so I can sort of take account of what the status of my body is as far as as far as connection overall and and structure and balance and uh, just really all the aspects or at least a few at a time not not to overload my, myself with thinking about things but to become comfortable with all the principles um, and and I feel that that's going to help me a lot because now that I know how to use the fighting method and that that works with the technique I um, know that the technique is very important to have 
but only as, I think, or mainly as part of the whole. So at whatever time you need it, it will be there, but you won't know exactly what you're going to need when, for example, and you won't need to train technique, technique, technique to have this when you might really need a different technique that you haven't been working on so much, sort of. Um, so more of the principles. Right, yes. So, um, and again, doing that, knowing that I am working towards a, a good end and, and feel confident that overall that will help me in a self-defense situation if one arises. Cool. Um, Jim? Uh, I think one of the things that I realized uh, I want to walk away with a little bit more skill on is uh, a lot of the dropping and the 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 fudging, you know, again generated from that small that small drop in in body positioning and sinking that root. Um, I think my uh, my partner Don had mentioned it as uh, you know the it's like stepping on an orange and getting that uh, expulsion of of energy the way the uh, you know an orange will uh, explode type of uh, visualization so uh, that orange or a tomato a, right yeah yeah <laughs> tomato. um so uh, and that in turn gives you that you need less of a wind up or less of a uh, you know, you don't have to pull back and punch. You can just have, literally have your hand on somebody or your foot on them and, and generate a lot of power. It's, a, it's, it's almost a, it's a surprising uh, result. So I'm going to work a little bit more on that. I'm going to work a little bit more on transitioning without being double weighted, you know, being able to walk. I think one of my, um, one of my, things that I've been fighting for a number of years is I tend to be a little bit too linear and I wanted to develop more of a, a fluid game being able to you know strike from any angle or not even strike even capture or redirect from any angle yeah yeah so I, I think that's very important and and even the redirections you know being able to express that fudging and in a redirection, you really get ahead of the other person's movement, and it's uh, it's a little bit disconcerting. I found it disconcerting the chances I got to spar with you a little bit and Harry, and you know how, you know how when all of a sudden your your intent is to come straight in, and when you're redirected that little bit and you're overcommitted, and and there's that little bit of extra. Um, attraction or drawing or getting out in front of your punch and all of a sudden it's like uh, you know really throws you off so the ones that come to mind was somebody was somebody and i don't remember if you were one of the ones that did this or not they're bringing the punch you get like a pluck type action to it and then their arm moves over there and now their head is in your hands yes, yes. and you and didn't move anywhere i was like i was punching him and now he's got my head and i'm turned <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yes, yes, and that, that, that was the last part of it, that stepping <laughs> into or over or through the other person that you, you get with that, that slight misdirection. So, yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you, sir, if I have another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> working on those things. <laughs> yep, yep, cool. Uh, all right, and uh, is there anything else any of you want to say about any, any other aspect of this? And so now is probably the time. And I, I just yeah. wanted to say, you know, one, one brief thing. Like I said, I, I started in this when I was in my teens. And, and uh, it's gotten to the point now where I'm playing catch up to, <laughs> to, to get some of this. So Denise and I just had our first grandson a couple of weeks hey, ago. Awesome. Congratulations. My, my, my first thought on the way back on the plane was, Man, oh man, I gotta get that little guy started in this before <laughs> so he doesn't waste all that time I wasted. <laughs> but uh, it, like Car, like I've done with Carly. Yes, exactly. Yeah, she'll be looking at the other. She she's seen or looks at the other stuff, and she's like, "That's not right," and she can usually tell you why. 
<laughs> that's excellent. Yeah, that's excellent. So send the little guy off to martial arts college before he's in, uh, in uh, pre-K. <laughs> they, already have, they already have a bunch of it. Uh, this is the fun part about that. It's just a matter of uh, working with them a little bit so that they get to keep it. Yes. Yeah, they're much more fluid than we are as adults. So. And softer. Yes. Yeah. Softer. And, and they're smart enough to get there because of the size and stuff. They're smart enough when it's a certain thing that they'll get out of the way. They won't stand there and try to force the situation. Or when they do, it's usually because they've got a better position than you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. All right, guys. Anybody, Thank anybody you, else? Well, I, I was impressed with how um, relaxation actually works and, in a lot of situations, um, because one, well, when one thinks of Tai Chi or practices, that relaxation is, is certainly just a part of it. But um, some people have the sense of, well, because you're, you're relaxed and, and, and soft, it's not powerful. And I just learned so much about how relaxation actually works in the sense of escaping holds um, or, you know, arm locks or something or in and actually um either in, in defense with with the arms relaxed and blocking or um the, the wavy arm motion and striking at the end how how extremely powerful that is um even with or especially with an open hand as opposed to a fist that one might without this knowledge think would be most powerful striking force, but learn that it actually isn't. So that's, um, again, a, a, a very valuable facet of the workshop that I am working on more, just you know, trying to relax more and more and with, with the understanding of exactly what, what the uh, value is behind it, not just, oh, relax, oh, relax, <laughs> feel more relaxed, but relax, so you can, you know, escape from arm locks or, or relax. If you have to defend yourself and block, your, your, your body is that much more powerful in defense or the strikes are that much more powerful. So um, cool. I just feel more empowered with this new knowledge. Excellent. Thank you. All right, guys. I think we're going to wrap it up for today. Um, I look, uh, had a great time with you. Uh, Folks at home, if you've got any or the, you're watching this uh, that weren't on the call, when we posted this up on the social media, please put your comments down below and we'll be ha we'll happily, uh, me and the other guys here, will interact with you there. And if there's other things you'd like to know about or have, or have us talk about, um, please put that and we will try to, try to, we'll be doing that. So um, Art, Harry. Jim and Matt, thank you, and more next time. Thank you, Sifu. Thank you, Sifu. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you, everybody. Good seeing you again. And now, a word from our sponsor. The martial art of Tai Chi is about softness defeating hardness. So how can Tai Chi have an iron palm? Iron palm is just a fancy kung fu name for a powerful hand that can do a lot of damage without getting injured. Tai Chi gets that with a method called internal iron palm. With the internal method, your opponent feels like you have a brick in your hand, even though it feels relaxed and easy to you. Internal iron palm only uses your own body and your own mind. You do not need a training partner or any extra equipment. Once you know the iron, internal iron palm method, you can do it whenever you have time in as little as five minutes a day. My name is Richard Clear and internal power is what I do. I created a unique online course to give you internal iron palm almost on autopilot. The program is so successful I put a money back guarantee on it. Find out more at internalironpalm.com. That's internalironpalm.com. Thank you.